Welcome back to worship. We are so glad to welcome you to worship as we worship together online. We'll be here every week to provide this online opportunity to gather and to worship together. We're at the end of our sermon series, the very final week of our series, Rise Up. I know it's been a really special and meaningful series for me. I hope it has been for you as well. This week, we'll hear the final sermon in our sermon series from Pastor Lilliard, Rise Up, More Than We Ask. Thanks for joining us for worship. Blessed be God, the Holy Trinity, source of life, love, grace, and peace. Amen. Loving God, if we say we have no sin, then we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
Let us pray. Loving God and Lord of life, you meet us in our despair and you bring us out of our tombs of fear and darkness. Teach us again that we have been raised with you into new life and make us a church that rises each day to serve, pray, praise, and proclaim through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. Today, our, our story from the Bible is kind of a hard one. It's from the Gospel of John, but it's a good reminder that Jesus is with us in the mess and in all the hard stuff of life. Jesus is with us in the touch of a friend. Jesus is with us in shared tears, where we sometimes we even need Kleenex. Jesus is with us in the friendly eyes, the smiling eyes behind the mask. Jesus is with us no matter what, all the time, through COVID, through racism, through riots. Jesus is with us in our friends and in our family. Jesus is with us. And so the story that we have today is an example of how Jesus is with us. And our story is about Jesus, Lazarus, and his two sisters, Mary and Martha. Now, those four people were besties. Uh, Lazarus and Mary and Martha were really good friends with Jesus. And um, when, when Jesus was off somewhere working with the disciples, Lazarus got really sick. Um, and he was at home with his sisters and his sister sent a message to Jesus telling him that Lazarus was really sick and that he should come. And Jesus waited for a couple days, um, and then he went to the house where Lazarus and Mary and Martha lived. But it was really sad because Lazarus had already died. Oh, it was terrible. Jesus cried, Mary and Martha cried. They hugged each other, they cried. There were so many people around too because they were all trying to help Mary and Martha. And then Jesus did something miraculous. He went to the tomb and he stood there and he said, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus came out. And it was really surprising. But then one of the most interesting things happened. Jesus asked all of the people who were around Mary and Martha, helping them to help Lazarus take off his bandages because his bandages were still on from when he was buried. He kind of looked like a mummy. And so, Jesus asked the crowd there, all of Lazarus' friends, to help him with the bandages so that he could hug again and walk and talk and dance. So Jesus was with them in that moment, and through the crowd, Lazarus gained new life. And that's super cool, you guys. And I know you know this because I have a friend who, when he was five years old, his name is Max. When Max was five, his mom died. And he said, you know what, Miss Arlene? He said, sometimes medicine makes you better and sometimes heaven makes you better. Max knew that Jesus was with him and his mom. And then I have a friend, Amelia, and she had a little baby cousin who died before he was even born. And she told me one day, and we cried and we hugged, and Amelia said, but it's okay because my baby cousin is with God now. And then I have another friend named Anna, and Anna had a really dear friend named Nancy. And Nancy was sick and dying, and Anna came to church one night to our group, and we were talking, and she prayed for Nancy, and she said, you know what? Nancy is gonna be an angel in heaven with God soon. And so we cried about that, too, and we prayed, but Anna knew instinctively that Nancy was gonna be with God, and that there would be new life for everybody who was grieving. So. I just am so grateful for all of you kids who have taught me that Jesus is always with us and that through our time that we spend together, we can learn from each other. So I am so thankful for you to know that Jesus always brings new life. Amen. Our reading is from the Gospel according to John, the 11th chapter. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, 
and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You're broken down and tired of living life on a merry-go-round and you can't find the
What a gift. So the gospel text that you heard is the middle of a kind of a three-part movement. I don't expect you to know everything about the Bible, so I'll tell you a little bit about before and after. Context. Lazarus was in one town. Jesus was out of town. Lazarus had two sisters, Mary and Martha, and they were very, very close friends. You might remember in the Bible that Jesus went over to his BFFs and he had dinner. And Mary sat at his feet. And Martha was in the kitchen working fast and furious. But most of all, she was furious. Furious that the lazy sister was seated at the feet of Jesus. And so tick was she that she went up to the Lord and Savior and said, doesn't it make you mad that she's sitting there doing nothing? Tell her to come and help me. And Jesus says in paraphrasal form, Martha, you're a good cook. I like your vittles. But when you talk to me, you're talking to the Savior. She's chosen wisely. So, I paint that picture because Lazarus is important because a dear friend of Jesus. And so, it's kind of odd when Jesus finds out that a dear friend is ill, he decides to stay put. When you've had someone in your life ill, do you stay put or do you go? And I wrote this down, so I got it right. As soon as Jesus heard that he was ill, Jesus said, and I quote, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. An odd thing to say when you hear about a dear friend close to death. And Jesus stays there another two days. That's not exactly what you expect from a dear friend. And then... When Jesus says, let's go to see Lazarus, the disciples say, "Uh, wait a minute, the last time you went there, they, the religious elite, tried to kill you. And after a bit of back and forth, that's kind of confusing because Jesus talks about him going to sleep and all that, and they're like, I don't get it. Once he's dead, Jesus says, okay, let's go. After he's dead. And then when Martha saw him, she said, well, if you would have been here, this would not have happened, which is a great testimony of faith, but it's not exactly accurate. They have a great little conversation. And then Mary, the one who sat at his feet, she's not there. When Jesus goes and sees her, she starts to weep. And for those of you who are my age, when you had a time when you had to memorize verses for confirmation, most people who were like me chose this verse. It's the shortest verse in the King James, Jesus wept. So they knew they could nail it. And then Jesus says, let's go to the tomb after four days. And Jesus says, Lazarus, come out. And lo and behold, the dude comes out walking. And then the religious leaders saw this huge, great miracle, and they said, we gotta kill him. You see the tie to the beginning? I'll wait till he's dead. This is to glorify God, to lead me to the cross, performs a miracle. Those who want to conspire against him say, let's go get him. Just as he planned Two points. We usually have three. Pandemic, Tim said, got to keep it short. It's his fault. (laughs) Point number one. Point number one. This is obviously pandemic. Please get me to point number one. I love that Jesus is not only calm under pressure, but Jesus knows what has to and will happen. I love that Jesus is all-powerful. Did you see what I... Jesus knew exactly what he was going to do. Geppetto and Pinocchio. Jesus machinated the process to happen exactly according to God's will. Jesus knew it had to happen and will happen, and he made it happen. I love the calm nature that Jesus had. We'll just wait. You ever had an EMT come to you and he or she freaks out? It's not helpful. They're supposed to be calm. And when I thought about what Jesus had and how Jesus was, I thought of my back doctor. I had surgery about 12 years ago on my back. 
No, I'm not falling apart. I've just had two weeks in a row when I'm talking about it. But I had an impaled nerve in my back. And I went to Twin Cities Spine Center. I looked up the best person to operate on my back. Dr. Francis Dennis is his name. And so I went there, and I waited in the waiting room for 30 minutes or three days. I don't know. It was forever. And they finally called my name, and then I thought, yes because I had an impaled nerve and I had to wait, I had to wait a week to have an MRI. And then I got in through the door and they said, here is your other waiting room. I thought, what is this, Purgatory 2? So I sat down in this waiting room, but it was kind of interesting because I liked the people watch. There was a charge nurse station there and it was a long hallway with all these rooms and then they had all these doctors who had on their, you know, doctor coats. And there was one guy standing there cooler than the other side of the pillow. He was just standing there. And all these other doctors would come out of their offices and go up and stand in line and talk to this guy. Then they'd write it down, they'd go back. And I waited there for 20 minutes for two days. I don't know what it was, but it happened time and time and time again. And finally they said, David Lillier, and I'm like, yes, I get to go to another waiting room. And I walked by this guy. And he was about five foot eight, but looked about six foot two, because he was all that in a bag of chips. And he looks at me, I look at him, and he's a smart aleck, I could tell. He kind of goes like this, and I go like that. And I looked at him in the eye and I said, it's tough to be you. He said, indeed. So I go into my examining room, and I wait there for 10 minutes or 10 days, I don't know, it was a long time. There's a knock on the door. I say, come in. And it's him. <laughs> he looks at me and nods, he smiles. I look at him and nod and smile. He holds up my film to the light. He looks and he says, oh my, it's tough to be you. I said, indeed. <laughs> I had the best back surgeon anywhere and I felt completely at peace. Jesus holds our life in the palm of his hand, and he knows exactly what has to and will happen. He's got you. He's that awesome where he says, this is gonna be fine. Why is it gonna be fine? Because I'm Jesus. Whatever has to happen, whatever will happen, Jesus holds you and me in the palm of his hand. And I go on the day of surgery, and I'm getting in my IV, and there are three nurses, and they say, who's your surgeon? And I said, Dr. Francis Dennis. And they said, you'll be fine. Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Was there at the beginning of creation? will be there when he comes back again. Everything that happens in your life, Jesus has you in the palm of his hand. Powerful, all-knowing, always present, comforting to know. Thank you. Point number two. I love that Jesus is smart and powerful, but I also love how much Jesus cares. I love the fact that Jesus wept. He knew he was going to raise him from the dead, but he was still sad because Mary was sad. When I thought about this, I thought about another incident. This happened pre-pandemic. It was someone in the congregation who was dying of cancer, a dear woman, and she was kind of in a coma. And I come to visit, and there's a dear friend of hers, and then her brother and sister-in-law, and they said, come on in, someone's talking to her. So I just sat in a chair, looked at my phone a little bit, but I couldn't help but listen since we're in one room and so I'm listening. And the person who's talking not only knows what she's doing, because as you walk people through things, there's a way to do it, but she was so kind and she was so considerate. She was so loving. And I thought to myself, well, I can quote scripture, but she's done everything else because 
she's doing such an awesome job. It lasted, I don't know, 15 minutes or 15 days. It seemed quite a long time because I kind of wanted to get to it, but it was also great to witness it. And then when she left, I looked at the friend and said, who is that? Is it a dear friend? And the sister said, no, that's actually the assistant director of the residence here, which is Summit Place, right over there. And whenever an organization does such a great job, I like to say how great they are, because this the assistant director, I said, are they dear friends? And she said, no, she's just a sister in Christ. Pastor Peter said he's done it for 23 years. I've done it for, what, six years longer, and we've all been in a hospital room, and these bright doctors, and God bless them, come in, but there are times, my friends, when sooner or later a doctor has to tell somebody else there's nothing else he or she can do. It doesn't matter how smart you are at that point. What matters is how kind you are. And to be frank, there have been times when I've heard a doctor tell a prisoner so rudely that I wanted to take him and grab him by the collar and throw him out because this is someone's mother, this is someone's dad, this is a child of God, and I know you don't necessarily want to fall in love with everybody, I understand that, but really, seriously, be kind. Just be kind and be loving. Jesus knew that Lazarus was going to come out of the grave, but he still sat with dear Mary and the one who is perfect shed a tear because he's kind and loving. You tell me one, one of the major problems we have in society today, and I will tell you that it's not necessarily power that's going to get us out of it. It's going to be mercy. We're a smart country, but very unbright in many other ways. And I love it that Jesus is strong and powerful. Because you know what my daddy always used to say when he preached on this? Lazarus came out of the grave, but he was going to die again. And this next time, he would not come out of the tomb. Literally, he would end up in heaven. And so you need power to raise us, to help us rise up. But I need a Savior who's kind and merciful and gentle because I'm a handful. And so are all of you when it comes to following the will of God. I love this text because it shows that Jesus is a double threat. The most powerful in all the land, the most merciful as well. I was trying to think of, and then I thought of some images. I thought of what we often do with Jesus is that we ask Jesus for something, and we just ask for Jesus to solve this and hope it appears in the way in which we ask, but usually it doesn't because Jesus is kind of that way. And it often takes a little bit longer. He waited four days. Could be four days, it could be 40 months. Who knows how long? And so you and I have expectations of Jesus. You and I ask a lot of Jesus. And so I thought of these pictures, and I hope this thing works. If not, we'll have to get a new one. It doesn't work. There we go. And so here's my thought is that this is what we ask of Jesus. How about you just do it? This is what we receive. Next slide, please. This is what we ask of Jesus. But this is what Jesus gives us. Next slide. This is what we ask of Jesus. And this is what Jesus gives us. Next. This is what we ask of Jesus, and this is what we receive. Next. This is what we ask. This is what we get. When you pray, expect. When you cry out, you will be heard. This isn't just about Lazarus. This is about the one without end. We can rise up every day knowing that if we need power, we have it. If we need mercy, 
will be met by it. Rain or shine, calm or windy, good or bad, today or tomorrow, Jesus is always there, giving us more than we even dare to ask for, because he's just plain better than us, which is awesome and true and much needed. Nice to have you back. God bless and amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Good and gracious God, as the days get longer in the glory of your summer, we are reminded of the many ways that you sustain creation. Growing the grass from the earth, the flowers and the trees, giving us food and everything that we need. Sustain your creation with your promise. Help us live as stewards of your good creation, tending and caring for the earth around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, you love your city, your cities, your neighborhoods, your states, your nations, all of the world belongs to you. And yet we don't live in justice. Sustain us, commit to us, transform our world and our planet with the small acts that we can share as your people. After the death of George Floyd, many are wondering how to recommit to justice for all races. Help us listen, help us hear, help us change. Give us faith that truly we can act for the goodness of all of God's people. Help us see that you created all people in your image and that you say that all people are good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, we pray for those in our midst, in our own congregation, who are asking for comfort or healing, protection or strength. Guide us in every prayer that we give. Sustain us with your spirit and your presence and your promise. Help us to love one another. We pray too today for all who are still suffering in the midst of global pandemic. Give doctors, epidemiologists, scientists, researchers, wisdom, patience. Give them persistence to find solutions, to find healing, to discover a vaccine. We pray too for all those who have grown challenged by this pandemic, whose businesses have been challenged, whose livelihoods have been uprooted. Sustain even your economy, God, and help us to see that there is indeed enough for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, we receive with great gratitude our offering. There are instructions on the slide, and we are so grateful for the many ways that you help to sustain the ministry of this congregation. Thank you. All the money that the world could hold, mountains made of solid
important one in every room Status matched by only kings You are better than all these things Your love is better than life You are the well that all run dry I have tasted and I have seen A few announcements before you go. We will be starting some new sessions of our series, Discovering Hope and Healing. The, this group is led by St. Andrew's Grief Support Group leaders, Cheryl Hargis, Tammy Spear, Julie Samuelson, and Pastor Peter. If you're feeling a little overwhelmed by our social circumstances today and need some encouraging words of hope and healing, join us. Sessions will be three consecutive weeks, June 29th, July 6th, and July 13th at either 1.30 in the afternoon or 6.30 in the evening. You can register on our website. The 2030-somethings will be starting a weekly kickball gathering. You can join us all summer long. Have you never played before? No problem. Are you a seasoned kickball professional? We'd love to have you and accept your challenge. Most of all, it'd be great to get outside and join the summer with some social distance approved gathering. Contact Pastor Matthew for more information. We are also eager to introduce to you a new ministry of St. Andrew, a more just world. In one of our first offerings, we invited Steve Starks, St. Andrew's building and property manager with his family to share their experiences of growing up black in Minnesota. They were asked to give their honest reactions about the crisis in our city and asked about how we might move forward together as one community. You can watch this video on our website and we invite you to discuss it as part of a small group on a Zoom call on Tuesday, June 30th at 1.30 in the afternoon. Please preview the video before discussion, and you can register online for the Zoom link. 
As we welcome you back into the sanctuary for worship, we want you to know that your safety and the safety of others is our guiding principle. We will continue our online worship experience while also transitioning slowly and safely to on-site worship. To review the guidelines that we have established, please go to our website. There will be a new process to enable you to attend worship. We now ask that you reserve your seat. Reservations will open each week on Monday mornings at 9 a.m. and remain open until full. We will be allotting 100 seats per service each Sunday. Please visit our website to reserve and confirm your spot at worship. This link is also available in the Thursday email. Receive the benediction. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, rise up to serve with joy. Thanks be to God.